Welcome. I'm Sebastian Mafud, and you're listening to WCAT Radio, the on-air wing of En Route Books and Media, bringing you the dulcet sounds of Catholic wisdom. Well, a good Monday afternoon to you. It's time once again for Faith and Sport on the Carolina Catholic Radio Network. We're coming to you live on AM 1270 WCGC. Also streaming live at carolinacatholicradio.org and on the Carolina Catholic Radio app. It's Faith and Sport coming to you live on this Monday afternoon with your host, Dr. John Aquaviva, and our special guest host, Ed Billick. Hey folks, welcome to the show, however, wherever you are joining us from. This is Faith in Sport here on Carolina Catholic Radio. Thank you so much. There are three ways to join us. You're probably doing one of those three ways. AM 1270, carolinacatholicradio.org, or through our app. It's the Carolina Catholic Radio Network app, and in both cases with the website and with the app, you just hit Listen Live, and uh, the voila, you got your show. Carolina Catholic Radio here, it's, uh, we're bringing you Faith in Sport. We do it each and every Monday. And as Chris will mention later on the show, it's it's uh, also rebroadcast five different times. We're really That's excited right. to bring you this show. So you don't have an excuse to miss it. I don't have an excuse to miss it, and uh, there's no excuse for lack of energy here. Ed's here. That's right. You're here. I'm here. We're all here. We're having a great time. I'd never laughed so much in the previous half hour going on air <laughs> than we did today. It's been fantastic. Here's yeah. what we're going to do today, and then Ed's going to join us on air. Uh, we're going to do the hit and miss with Ed. Normally, Carlos has joined us for that, but this special guest here today, our special co-host, Ed Billick, is here. Uh, the phone guest is going to be Dr. Dennis Johnson. He's a professor, president of Hemview. They are consultants for sport leadership. We're going to do the weekend headlines, quick Q&A with Dr. A, and then we have our Pope Quote of the Week. In fact, we switched a couple weeks ago from the Catholic of the Week to our Pope Quote of the Week, and eventually we'll come back to something else of the week. Oh, by the way, we also have our Stat of the Week, but... You know, without further ado, Ed Billick, welcome back to the show, brother. Hey, John, thank you very much, and happy Advent to you. Happy Advent to you, man. We had our second week. Is this the quickest Advent ever? Gee, wow. I we know. Second Sunday, third yes. Sunday's coming up, and yeah. Christmas is not too far it, off. Boom, it's right there. Next Sunday is the rose-colored, not pink. It's That's right. Yeah, never say pink. Investments. That's right? right. In fact, everybody out there knows exactly what we're talking about. Yes. Brother, how you been since Doing we- wonderful. Doing well. We'll talk a little bit of that in my hit and miss section. But, hey, guys, I was listening to you on the app the other day, well, a couple of weeks ago, to- both Mondays, matter yeah. of fact, coming through the hills of West Virginia on the app in Bluetoothing it in a car. Excellent. Yeah. The quality, well, the production work, of course. Well, John sounds good as ever. And the content <laughs> was wonderful. It was it was, a, it was a inviting radio, and it had yeah. a compelling content. Yeah, I appreciate that. No, thank you for joining us, and we, I want to uh, extend a thanks to everybody who's joining us. And one thing I want to do, though, is pass this show along. There's got to be people that are fans of sport. They are coaches. They are athletes. They are administrators in sport. Referees. We're going to talk about referees in a, today's hit and miss. There's people that want to listen to the show. They just don't know. In fact, a joke I made on air a couple of weeks ago was I was talking to our president, David Papandrea, and I said to him, uh, you know, David, you know, we've been on the air now, Carolina Catholic Radio now, for four months. People don't even know that we have a radio station here. And he said to me without hesitating, John, most of the people I talked to didn't even know there was Catholic Radio, like in general. Yeah. I, I was surprised. When was the first time you heard of Catholic Radio? Do you remember or about Wow. Well, I know you, it's a when, big when question. you and I did some work with Radio Maria, there were some networks out there, and I always knew of EWTN. Yeah. Yeah, but I didn't know they were radio broadcasted. And if I did, maybe a yes or no was sponsored by a diocese in Pittsburgh or in San Antonio where I live. But predominantly, like we have now here, the yeah. opportunity, and with the ability to stream online. It's a big course, deal. Yeah. 12, that's, that's a huge deal. And, you know, John, you said this before when you kicked off the show. If folks, why don't you do a say, you know, John, why don't you do a segment on this, or maybe we could talk a little bit about this. I know you're open for suggestions because this could be a station for the listeners on, you know, promoting their faith and a, and a love of sports, like you, you clearly have. No, no, this is exactly what we want to do, and in particular, I'd love to have local athletes on or local coaches on who exemplify leadership, who exemplify character, morality on the field as well as off the field. There's got to be people out there. And I've heard from our listeners very little, at least on that particular thing. So throw us a name, throw, throw us a school, something that can lead us to something that would be a good guest on the show and that exemplifies what we talk about here, faith and sport. Because ultimately, 
we want to apply our Christian faith to all aspects of sport. And so many people are, like I mentioned, are either fans or they're athletes. And right there makes up a large percentage of the people in our population. They're coaches, they're administrators. A lot of people are involved in sport or interested in sport for one reason or another. And we want to bring those people on the show and see what sport means to them, and in particular, how they live their faith how they live their faith through that sport. And you're a, you're a noted journalist as well. You've published two books now. I think I you just released the last one, didn't you? I did. In fact, today, is a, today was a big day. I was on uh, the Teresa Tamio show. It got released last month through Tan Books. It's called Improving Your Body Image Through Catholic Teaching. And uh, it's it's going through its promotional stage right now. I was on a national show this morning, Teresa Tamio. Tomorrow I'm on two national shows to promote the book. I'm really excited. So, yeah, folks, go to tanbooks.com, or you can just go to Amazon. And, again, the name of that new book is Improving Your Body Image Through Catholic Teaching. And, and plus you have a month's vacation right now to put a lot more time into this because you do what? I'm a, I'm a professor at Wingate University, and I hesitate to say this around people who actually have to work for a living. But, yeah, we have the next three and a half weeks off before I have to report you to you got work a great a few finals and that, but that's about it. And that's it, it man. Yeah. It's awesome. Time it's awesome. with the kids. Time with the kids. Well, listen, yeah, buddy. You know, after John does all these interviews, Eddie's going to be a bigger celebrity than you and me oh, yeah, we'll have to pay to come in here and be with him <laughs> listen let's talk about what's going on in the in the world of sport and then we'll do our hit and miss how's that wonderful um college football this was a big week the college football playoff has been determined it's gonna be lsu against uh oklahoma and then the other game is going to be clemson against ohio state of course the winner of those two teams will play january 13th uh so about another month away we'll know who the national champ is there I believe that they got it right. Those four teams. Did you have any opinion on that, Ed? Whether yeah, once LSU dominated Georgia, it was it was it's obvious. Easy, yeah. Yes, and their head coach obviously agrees as well. You know, what I have to look up. Is I think this is the first time that neither that uh, both Clemson and Alabama haven't been in it in five years. But Clemson's in it. Yeah, yeah. But th- th- they both haven't been at the same time. Yeah, exactly. I think yeah. you're absolutely right. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, there's going to be th- how many bowl games? I want to say 39. 39 bowl Crazy. games. And the best name, what was the Potato Bowl? <laughs> I like the Potato Bowl, but there's a, the John Aquaviva Bowl, too. <laughs> or the, the Faith and Aqu- Sport Bowl. The, you that's know? right. There should be the Faith and Sport Bowl. I agree with that. We need to sponsor for that, and I think we can get darn on the air. Yeah. Uh, other bowl games, um, you know, these bowl games are going to be starting December 20th, so it's just a week from this weekend. And the first one is Buffalo against UNC Charlotte. They made a bowl for the very first time. Nice. I know, good for them. And the big one, of course, I think That's everybody... It's the Bahamas Bowl, isn't it? It is, yeah. very good. Yeah. Uh, and the big one, uh, outside of the, at least is projected, outside of the uh, Final Four, is Alabama versus Michigan. Now, it sounds good on paper. They've only played four times in the history. They're 2-2. Two and two. These are storied programs. The problem is Alabama's going to be favored by about 28 points. That's good. <laughs> See how excited he is about his Michigan team? Chris, what do you think? Well, the, here's... Yeah. The, <laughs> There's a whole lot to be said about that, but the bottom line is I don't think they're in the same league. I don't think Michigan's in Alabama's league. It would be nice Michigan wins that game. You know, Gosh, th- th- that would be their Christmas. That would be it, their five-year mm, Christmas present. And to tell the truth, Ed, the reason that they have a legitimate shot is so many people are gonna are not going to play in a game like that for Alabama. It's probably as well as Michigan. That would be one reason why Michigan could win. You mean because they don't want to injure themselves for a future NFL career? That's right. Okay. That's right. And then the other sad. reason is I think they're disgruntled. I think they deserve to be – they they feel like they deserve to be in the college football playoff, and the effort they bring to that field that day that just all made – all-burn game killed them. It did. That crushed them. In the NFL, uh, Panthers lost another. It makes it five in a row, but this time without Ron Rivera. Uh, Chris's beloved Redskins lost to the Packers. They kind of came back there at the end, right? They held yeah. them 20 points, which was yeah. a big thing. Yeah, they lost by five. They yeah. did, 20 to uh, 15. Uh, and the 49ers, I thought it was the game of the week. The 49ers continue to show that they are for real. They beat the Saints on the last second field goal in New Orleans. I thought New Orleans was going to win that game. By the way, this is a side point, but the team I find the most exciting in all the NFL are the New Orleans Saints. I think they're. I think Drew Brees is great. I, I love their offense. It's just very efficient. They have a decent defense. They have one of the best home field advantages in all of sport. Watch out for them in the playoffs, brother. Yeah, you ask me who I'm. F- I'm pulled for. You'll well, be we surprised. Know this. No, we you'll know be this. surprised. Oh, okay. It's not. It's not your beloved Steelers at this point. We'll talk that. Okay. <laughs> uh, NCAA basketball. Um, over the weekend, there wasn't all that many big games, but UNC fell for the third time in about 10 days. They're 6-3 and three overall. They have offensive problems. They have major offensive problems. In fact, they have gone back-to-back games without 50 points since like 1938-39 season. Really? Yeah, the first time in two consecutive games they didn't score 50 points. UVA took them to task, but UVA is one of the best programs in the nation for sure. Oh, it has been. 
NC State looking That's even right. better. They're at seven and two, so they're one record, right. one team, uh, one game better than UNC. Yeah. Had a Mi- nice victory over Wake Forest, ninety-one to let's see what was it, ninety-one to ninety-one to eighty-two. There you go. The final and, score was. and they beat Wisconsin in That's the right. yeah in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Oh, so that was good oh, stuff. That's right. And finally, I want to come back to this a little later, but the new Hall of Fame inductees. I think this is the lowest number we've had. In a long time. This is just the Veterans Committee. Yeah, that's right, because there's two different committees. Yeah, but, they yeah. call it the Modern Era, but it's yeah. the old Veterans Committee uh, nomination. But it's legitimate as anything, right? Oh, They're yeah, inducted in the Hall yeah. of Fame. They're in, you know. By the way, this is one of the things that is a misconception about the Hall of Fames in any sport. But the Hall of Fame, the committee and the... The the museum and everything that goes on has nothing to do with the actual major league. In other words, Major League Baseball has n- no influence, has no uh, you know say. Well, you're kind of giving me a funny look. Well, but they use the logos and all that. They, they, they're they licensed do. to do so. But they yeah, do. But they don't have the the they don't they're not the decision makers. That's right. To your point. That's right. All right. Let's move on from that, and we'll come. I want to come back to that Hall of Fame discussion. But let's do this. Our hit and miss of the week, as always. You go first. What is it? A hit or a miss? Well, no, it was a hit, and and because it was a different kind of hit. Uh, eight weeks ago, my daughter gave uh, birth to a, a beautiful baby boy, and her dad is a big Carolina Panthers fan. And so yesterday I'm over there and I'm helping them put up some Christmas lights. Sure. And I'm holding his two little fingers. He's sure. grabbing onto. I mean, his hands hold on my finger. I says, yeah, you're, "His name's Dylan." I said, sure. "Dylan, you're going to be a, a Panther fan, I know, but Dylan, you got to be a Steeler fan too." <laughs> and he smiled at me. There you go. He <laughs> liked the word Steeler. Wow. <laughs> and just then the Steelers were beating the Arizona Cardinals in the background. <laughs> I had it on the radio because the Panthers had already lost. You know there were you know there were two thirds of the fans in the Arizona uh, Stadium, State Farm Stadium, that were Steeler fans. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. So my hit of the day was my grandson. You know, he, when I said you're going to be a Steeler fan, he gave me a smile. Now let me let me ask this then because I, I mentioned uh, either off air or on air I was going to ask you this question: the Steelers are are playing really well, at least record wise in the last oh few. Oh my games. gosh! You remember the first three games they They're lost awful. to the Patriots, Seahawks, and Niners. Yep. They got blown out, and it, everyone was calling for Coach Tomlin's head. Now yeah. he's possibly Coach of the Year a nominee yeah. as they're in a wild card. They can, may make the wild card. I, th- I think they're going to. Now let me ask you this: Is it are they improved? Now remember, they don't have their starting quarterback. They don't have their starting. They lost Le'Veon Bell. There's a lot of guys on the practice squad that are playing that are on their team. Yeah. So is it a bad division? Is this a you know function of a bad division? Well, are eight, they playing well eight or and five? Both? Forget about the Browns and the Bengals. You still have Baltimore up there. This is true. With Lamar Jackson. So this is true. I mean, for that kind of you know, bring the season back, Tomlin. I tell you, I give him credit. He's doing more with less. No, he's doing he's doing a no lot. No Bell, no Antonio Brown, no it just, Ben. In me, it shows it's just one more reason why I like and respect the Pittsburgh Steelers. I, I never liked them growing up. I, I've never voted for them to win. But how do you not respect that organization? And, and the defense is doing extremely well, so I don't want to take much more to talk about my no, love no worries. Of Pittsburgh Steelers. Hey, folks, if you just joined us, this is Faith and Sport here on Carolina Catholic Radio. I'm Dr. John Aquaviva, joined by uh, periodic co-host Ed Billick. Every once in a while, you hear from our producer Chris Pressler. Uh, thank you for joining us you today. Give the show some class. Yeah, they, absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. That's you, not this guy. <laughs> We've already talked about weekend headlines. We're doing our hit and miss of the week. And then stay tuned because we have Professor Dennis Johnson coming up. He's the pres- president of Hemview. They are consultants for sport leadership. He's going to join us in a couple minutes. But right now, we're in the middle of our discussion on the hit or miss in the world of sport. And mine is really cool. Um, this is particularly interesting because... A couple weeks ago on the show, Ed, I'm going to set this up a little bit. I had a, a youth softball coach sitting in that seat, and we were talking about how to deal with umpires, how to deal with parents of irate parents or uh, you know of irate players and so forth. And I asked him, "There's a Facebook page by the name of Offside, and it was created by a youth referee, a youth soccer referee, and it's to shame people into better behavior. In other words, on this website." On this particular Facebook page, he asked people to send in videos of people doing inappropriate things toward the referee or toward one another, like the parents arguing with one another, and he wants to shame them into better behavior. And I asked this coach, is this a good thing or a bad thing? What do you say? He said, ultimately, it's a good thing. He said, I think these people need to see themselves on video. They need to hear themselves and how they're talking and how they're acting. And he says, and maybe it will work. 
Is that like John the Baptist yesterday saying you broods and that's vipers? Right. That's right. I think and I, calling their name out. I, it's not what they say; it's what they do. So I think this guy's wanting to shame them, huh? That's right. And I thought that was interesting because you're right. Scripture talks about that. Remember, even one time in Scripture, Christ calls Peter the person. He said, you're, "I'm going to build my church with you." He called him Satan himself. And of course, biblical scholars will say that you know they'll argue exactly what he was referring to. There it wasn't calling him actual Satan, but he's referring to him. He's calling out his behavior, his po- possible behavior. And this right. guy's calling out some bad behavior. That's right. So listen to this. There's an attorney in Virginia. He's a high school referee, and is um, is is really actually frustrated at the fact that there's so many teams, there's so many players, there's so many people involved in youth sport that don't represent it as they should. So in his years, and he's been a referee since 1974. And remember, on the side, he's a ref, he's a lawyer, so I think he has you know maybe a little more funds to to use than most people. But what he wants to do, he wants to fight back on this bad behavior and all the bad stuff that's come out about youth sport. Not just soccer, right? That's what that offside one was about. But all sport. And he says, let's fight this. And so what he did was he he was going to award this past year $1,000 either to a boys team or girls team. This is varsity soccer if they can make it through the season, this is last spring, with zero yellow or red cards for unsportsmanlike conduct. And what did he find? And before I mention what he found, he had he said on his website that there were dozens of people that came to him and said, that was a great offer, and you're not going to lose a dollar. <laughs> right? Because yeah. people predicted that yeah. it, at least every team's going to have one red or – now, remember, a yellow card is generally not – it may not be egregious. What kind of infraction if we have some time? Just quickly, yellow, red? Yeah, yellow is when you tackle somebody kind of roughly. Or, or trip them? Yeah, you trip – but maybe tripping them purposely might be a red card. Okay. A yellow card might be sliding into somebody too, too aggressively. Yeah. Right? And those are really common fouls that are called. Anyway, he gave away to 10 teams – uh, $500 scholarships. Nice. Yeah, so there was 10 teams total that he refereed that didn't get one yellow or one red card, and I thought that was a great way to go the opposite of this offside website. In baseball, throwing a throwing at a guy's head, that'd be a double red card <laughs> to kill somebody. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's interesting. I wouldn't I wouldn't mind them doing that in both in football and actually in all sports. That'd be good. Back to this lawyer guy, this ref, that's, that's some cool stuff. Reinforcing good behavior. Reinforcing good behavior. And this is great a great segue into our next guest because I remember I talked to him about offsides a couple months ago, so I'd like to get his input on that. So there you go, Ed. Our hit and miss of the week. Yours was your grandson loving the Pittsburgh Steelers, even or though he's only a smile at least. Yeah, <laughs> even though he's only eight weeks old. And mine was a lawyer referee from Virginia who's awarded teams for not getting a yellow or red card. Nice, folks. You're listening to Carolina Catholic Radio. This is Faith and Sport. I'm Dr. John Aquaviva, and we're joined by Ed Billick, our periodic co-host here. Be sure to pass the word on this show. You can listen to us on AM 1270, Carolina Catholic Radio Network app, or carolinacatholicradio.org. In both the case of the app and the website, all you have to do is hit listen live, and you can tune into the show. And as you mentioned, you're as far away as West Virginia, and this comes in clear as Any, anywhere, as anywhere in the world. That sounds great. Uh, okay, let, Maybe the Pope's chiming in right now, listening. <laughs> that's not a fact. That's right. We ought to get your buddy on yeah, there from right. Rome. He yeah, can that's listen right. in. That's yeah. right. We could get the Pope okay. on we there, too. we got our guests yeah. coming up. Very good. So, folks, let me introduce uh, the guest on the line. He is Dr. Uh, Dennis Johnson. He is a professor of sport management and is the current president of Hemview Consultants for Sport Leadership. Dennis Johnson, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for having me, John. This is fantastic, brother. Did you hear my hit of the week with the referee giving out a $1,000 uh, or potentially $1,000 scholarships to the teams if they didn't get a yellow or a red card? I did hear that. I think that's a great way to go, uh, reinforcing the positive. Rather, and uh, I wasn't all on board with your your body shaming the uh, bad parents there. Uh, I'd rather see him go with the positive pick. Oh, no, I, I appreciate that. In fact, that's what I was mentioning is that I, um, the coach that was on was – Actually, he was kind of for that. But the reason I thought that was a good segue, in fact, I, I go, this is perfect because I'll do this just before Dennis comes on. And I'm going to mention this because I remember a few weeks ago, I heard about this, or actually a few months ago, I heard about this uh, Facebook page called Offside, and it was just to shame the people. And I remember, and you probably remember this as well, I said, what do you think about that? And your very first comment was, why is he only shaming people from bad behavior? Why doesn't he somehow reward good behavior? 
Right, and right. It, but do you remember what I said? Good behavior, one, is expected, and two, how do you show good behavior at a soccer game? Just showing, it, it, it would be boring video, right? It would be a boring story. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. basically it's people not well, doing something. Uh, it's, it's just like the news, you know. Um, sensationalism sells, and it's always the bad stuff. And You know, national news, you might get the last five minutes, they show a, a, a nice human interest story. Oh yeah, absolutely, and and uh, it, yeah, the other twenty five minutes is uh, shaming people from their behavior for a lot of different reasons. So, well, listen, let's let's cut over to Hemview. Tell us about um, okay, Hemview Consultants. What do you guys special in? Why did you start this organization? What do you do for them? Well, you know, as you know, I, I've been involved in sport. You know, I, I've been a lifelong educator, and I've been in sport with over you know forty years as a high school teacher and coach, and then later on as an NCAA coach and uh, college professor. So, you know, I've got, I have the, the, the background, and I, I'm, I'm in the, the retirement stage now. I do coach a little bit of high school wrestling yet, but MVU Consultants, I just thought it was important to put together a group of uh, specialists, and we can go out, uh, you know, our, our big thing would be coach development, you know, trying to educate uh, uh, future coaches on uh, uh positive practices, so to speak. Um, unrelated to this program, probably, we do do uh, 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 stuff with the uh, physical education programs, sport management programs, be they in high school or colleges. We do have experts that can go that way. But I think for the purpose of today, and what we, we like to do is, is primarily it's about parent mm-hmm. and coach development. Now, you mentioned positive practices. That's a kind of a catchy term. What is something that, not necessarily that you guys teach, but, and I know it goes hand in hand with what they need, but what is, what are, what's the main tactic or main kind of characteristic that you feel coaches should adopt? Well, I'll just give you a free example. And I, I ran into this about 25 years ago now, but Every every athletic environment or sport team that I've been involved with for the past 20, 30 years, uh, the culture is always a we build up, we don't tear down atmosphere. Yep. In other words, you know, we, we just don't allow kids bullying, hazing, making fun of one another. And and once a coach establishes that type of, an, of a culture, I have found that even when a, when a, when a athlete starts to make fun of somebody, three guys on the team will, will they will stop just stop and say, Hey, we build up here. Yeah. And so you, you don't have that that whole deal with having to reprimand people for poor behaviors. You just set the culture and that's what we teach uh, coaches to do, to set the culture so it's positive. And and uh, what are particular things that you say, like, um, okay, so we build up here, but what are the other tactics that you teach them that they can, that are tangible, that's something that they can take back to the practice that very day? Can you think of anything off the top of your head that would be well, I, I'll addressing give that? You another example, and this is from the wrestling world, but uh, I don't know if we've talked about this before. The whole handshake ritual that athletes do before and after games. Yep. You're familiar with that, of course. And and you know what did it mean to you when you did that? It, I think it probably had some meaning to you. Would that be true? I think it had a little meaning. Certainly, you know, it was always after the game, of course. And I thought it was always. And I know this is an overstated word, and we've used it already here today. But I thought it was just a good sportsmanship gesture. You're saying good game, and you're trying to congratulate them, not whether they won or lost, but on just the effort that they gave. Of course, it could be insincere to an extent because they may not have played a good game and they might have shown yeah. some really bad character. What do you have to say well, about here's that? here's what I have found, and, and this was from, from speaking with athletes. Most of them think it's just it's a ritual. They don't even think about it. They, most of them don't want to do it because yep. they say, you know, we won, we lost. You know, yeah. if you won, big deal. If you lost, you don't want to shake your hand anyway. Yep. So uh, going back to your point, one of the things that, I have been trying to do, or we at Hemview have been trying to do for a number of years now, is give meaning to that handshake. And this is something tangible that they can take back, coaches can take back. Yep. Um, if you look at the meaning of a competition, and you go back to the Latin root word, it means striving together. And so I always, I always um, and I'll use wrestling again, you know, when a boy walks out on the mat, a boy or a girl walks out on the mat, if he or she has no opponent, how good is he going to be? Of course. You know, can you tell? 
you won't be able to tell, right? No, you, of course. You need that opponent to That's see right. how good you can. So we, we, we talk to our people a lot about, when you shake hands in your own mind, please give me your best efforts because you need that opponent's best efforts That's right. to see how good you are. That's right. And then when we shake hands at the end, we say, thank you for your efforts. Yeah. That's really what competition should be about. And, in fact, uh, that's a good way to kind of eliminate this win-at-all-cost society. You know, we can, we can now go into looking at success versus winning. Because let's be honest, if a, if a student athlete gives his best efforts, what more can you ask? That's right. Folks, you're listening to, the, to Carolina Catholic Radio. The show is Faith and Sport. I'm Dr. John Aquaviva. I'm being joined here by Dr. Dennis Johnson. He's a wrestling coach. He's the president of Hemview. They are consultants for sport leadership, and we're talking about basically good practices, positive practices that coach should take uh, you know, to the, to the gym, to the field, to the mat, whatever sport that they're coaching. Dennis, hey, uh, and, uh, go and ahead. Before you go on with your next question, I just want to tell you, I really appreciate uh, giving me the time and the airspace to talk about that whole competition thing because in our society here in this country, we've become so uh, infatuated with the win at all costs. That's right. I mean, let's be honest, half of us lose in any contest we play, so we need to, we need to frame this in a success um, model. Absolutely. Uh, switching gears, off air, we were talking about that so such a high percentage of kids who start playing before the age of 10, for instance, about 75% of them stop playing a sport by the age of 13. Why do they stop playing, Dennis? Well, you know, there's a variety of reasons, but, but the main one, the main reason they stop playing, it's not fun anymore. I mean, there's study after study has shown that. Now, there's a variety of reasons uh, that, that might define what fun is, you know, they, right. they may just change their interests or they're not good enough, or they don't like coaches, but, but the bottom line, it's not fun, and, and what I find under that, you know, coaches aren't prepared to keep their, their kids engaged in a positive way. Sure. And, and how can they do that? Like, for instance, in the sport of wrestling, you mentioned that 50% of the first year middle or high school wrestlers don't return for a second year. If you could talk to all the coaches, literally, like on a, like at a conference or some type of conference call, what would you tell them? What would the, be the one or two things you could tell them to increase the chances of retaining those kids for that second year? I, I think the number one thing is, you know, a coach has to be transformational. Uh, if I, were, if I uh, let's just try a little experiment here while we have thirty seconds. Give me five characteristics of the, the one coach that you had just made it happen for you just just like four or five things that made that person the one guy that you remember sure. or gal sure sure uh they they knew the game well they were passionate yep. about yeah they were passionate yep. about the game they had a lot of energy and i thought they related to the athlete really well like they they played themselves and they understood the game at where we where we're where we were playing it and did they care about you and about how you were going to end up as a citizen absolutely sure and, and when I when I do this with uh, coaches around the country, you know, I get I get 30, 30 descriptors, and not one deals with winning. You know, and, and I think that's the one thing that uh, if I could relate to coaches. You know, the, the the kids playing the game have to know that the coaches care about them and are concerned about them, not necessarily with with uh, with the with the technique, but also of them as a person. It's interesting. And, and that's a study, 30 characteristics that have been given in the surveys that you've done, and not one well, of them. Yeah, let's, let's, put, let's put it this way. I've been to over 18 states, and I do the NCAA uh, National Wrestling Coaches every summer, and never in all of those have I ever had a coach write down, my coach was a winner. Not I mean, once. Dennis, the last couple of weeks, over the last couple of weeks, we've had some youth coaches either in studio or on the phone. And one of the questions I want to ask them is, how do they deal with irate parents? And of course, they're dealing with parents on a lot of different levels. Is wrestling any different? And in particular, what would be the general comments that you would make to a parent to try to have them communicate with the wrestling coach or the coach in general uh, to make that relationship a little stronger? Well, let's start this way. First of all, um Research is pretty clear. At least 60% of your parents are all on point and willing to help out, and they're, they're sort of doing the right thing. Um, it's funny.
funny that you you mentioned this because we just held our team uh, parent meeting, and and the number one thing that I would tell coaches to communicate to their parents first of all is you know like after a game, just tell their their kids that man we just love watching you compete and stay away from all the tactic tactical technical stuff you know um, we always worry about uh, the child uh, having thinking thinking that his parents' love is tied up into his performance. We want to... Yeah. So, so when I talk with parents, that's the first thing I want to get out there. Then if they're mad at me, is that what you want to know now? You want to know what, what happens when the parent's mad at the coach or they're irate? Yeah. Is that ex- your question? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, you know, you need to set that up uh, during your parent orientation at the beginning of the season and just, just insist that they... Uh, they give you a cool off period after the game, mm-hmm. and in some cases, set up an appointment. You you don't want to get into a situation where you're actually arguing with uh, a parent, but you want to be able to put yourself. You want to have empathy. You want to be able to put yourself in their shoes, sure, and uh, try to look at it from their perspective and kind of work work through it that way. Um, folks, you're listening to Faith and Sport here on Carolina Catholic Radio. We're talking to Dr. Dennis Johnson. He is the president of Hemview. They are consultants for sport leadership. Uh, the area of specialization for Dr. Johnson is coaching leadership, and in particular in the world of wrestling. And he, and he works with the – help me with this, uh, Doc. It's the National Wrestling Coaches Association. Very good. Uh, and Yeah, I, tra- I travel the country and do co- uh, coach leadership sessions. And uh, currently, I'm, I'm authoring a risk management course for the men and women that are, that are wrestling, and then also a high school high school coaches resource manual. So that's that's my uh, main main uh, job right now. It's awesome. Listen, we only have a couple minutes left, but I, I do want to touch on this, and I'm going to shift gears yet again. Um, I, and I know there's a lot of listeners out there, Dennis, and I'm sure you're confident of this. Well, they're like Aquaviva Johnson, Johnson Aquaviva. Where do I know that name from? And of course, they know it. <laughs> they know, I know it. where you're going. Yeah, of course, they know it from the uh, whether we should pay college athletes or not that we did in 2012. And I think for both you and I, it's safe to say we have never been more quoted for any work that we've ever done. Um, outside of this. It was quoted a lot. It was so, cite, cited a lot and so forth. Anyway, we're going to do another one now that this nil issue has come up, name, image, and likeness, probably in the next couple of months. But let me ask this, especially this is perfect question for you because not only do you work with the National um, Wrestling Coaches Association, but it's dear to you. You've done it since you were a kid. You wrestled in college and so forth. Why is paying college athletes to any degree harmful to the small sports, some people call them the Olympic sports, like wrestling. Take two well, minutes. It's, to... it's, it's just a matter of fact, and you can see this from what happened to wrestling uh, post-Title IX. Uh, mm-hmm. We lost over 500 college wrestling programs as a result. There are those that would argue, but it was probably as a result of Title IX. And, and I worry, I have some concerns that once we go to this uh, likeness paying athletes for their likeness model, which I think they should be paid for, by the way. Sure. But what what I'm afraid is going to happen is that the people that are paying the athletes for their likeness will no longer contribute to the colleges and universities. And once we see that happen, where there's a lack of funding for college sports, the ones that are going to lose out are the Olympic sports like, like wrestling. Yeah, I think it's inevitable, at least to a degree, but certainly the NCAA is going to fight against that. I think you and I are going to fight against that in the journals that we're going to write in and so forth. Listen, before we go, I want to give you a sincere thank you. First of all, thank you for appearing on the show. Thank you for all the students through sport management and physical education that you've impacted over the years. And very few people, if any, were more beloved, and I mean this with sincerity, that uh, few people I've ever worked with, if anybody, had a better impact and more positive impact on students' learning than you did. So thank you for that, brother. And thank you for your work with the wrestling coaches here in the, in America and making sport overall a better experience. Well, I appreciate all those comments. I just hope my winter hat's going to fit when I leave to go to practice. <laughs> but, uh, hey, always a pleasure. I'll come back anytime. I appreciate that, uh, Dennis. And um, uh, you have a good day, and we'll talk soon. 
All right, that, folks, that, there you have it. Dr. Dennis Johnson, he works with the National Wrestling Coaches Association and uh, providing sport leadership for them and making the experience better for the students, better for the or better for their athletes, better for the parents and so forth. So um, and also check Hemview out. They are consultants for sport leadership. So if there's a organization, especially with sport at a school, especially that you're interested in having coach development, uh, take a look at Hemview and uh, Dr. Johnson. That was pretty cool. Positive guy. Yeah. He reinforces the positive behaviors as opposed right. to the negative. And uh, no, very insightful. You get some great guests on this show, John. Where, yeah. do you, where do you find some? I know people? this. No, that's it's one of the reasons that it's a blessing, and I mean this. It's a blessing to be in the position that I am to be a professor at a university, and also when you're the host of a radio show, combined with the fact that you're a professor, and this is letting the cat out of the bag. This is not right rocket science. If you have those two titles, it's actually relatively easy to get people and, to and say yes. And the folks yes. you have on, and I know from even the past, the guests you've had, they provide a lot of credibility uh, to to what to the, to the whole theme of faith and sports. So uh, good stuff. We're going to end before we go to a break on this note, and it's worth repeating. I thought the most fascinating thing he said was when they did surveys on the characteristics of the people from athletes, whether they were currently an athlete or they're a former athlete like me. Right? He said, "Tell me the first four or five things that pops up." And he said, in the list of 30 top characteristics in their surveys they did, not one of them mentioned the fact that that person wanted to win. And I don't think this is a secret to anybody either, but if you develop character, you develop really good work ethic, and you show those players, and in the the case of me being a teacher, you show your uh, students that you care, they're going to perform for you. And I think that's what some of the great coaches do. I I, I really do believe that some coaches – they want to win, and they're just so good at it, despite their character flaws, that they they win. But I thought that was a great point that so few, in fact, none of the top 30 characteristics they mention winning. Good about stuff. To, about yeah. to. Okay, Chris, let's do this. Let's go to a break. We'll come right back. Okay. You're listening to Faith in Sport. When we come back from the break, we got the quick Q&A with Dr. A. We've got the Pope quote of the week, and we got some mis- miscellaneous stuff to cover, we too. We sure Ed. do, John. <laughs> Stay tuned, folks, right here on Carolina Catholic Radio. And we want to mention to you that if you've missed any of the broadcasts so far, you can hear a encore presentation of Faith and Sport tonight at 10 on the Carolina Catholic Radio Network. You can also hear an encore presentation tomorrow night at 8, Wednesday night at 11, and also Saturday afternoons from 4 to 5, and Sunday afternoons from 2 to 3. So if you miss any of Faith and Sport Live, you've got several opportunities to hear an encore presentation of Faith and Sport on the Carolina Catholic Radio Network, broadcasting at AM 1270 WCGC, streaming online at carolinacatholicradio.org and the Carolina Catholic Radio app. And we've got more Faith and Sport Live coming up right after the break. AM 1270 Catholic Radio Charlotte. Learn, love, and live your faith. Together, it's the best way to live your day. Do you wish to have a closer union with our Lord Jesus Christ? Would you like to learn how to be the hands and feet of Christ? Would you enjoy living the famous prayer attributed to St. Francis that begins with, Lord, make me a channel of your peace and truly learn what it means? St. Francis also had a famous expression that when all else fails, use words. If these words touch your heart, then you may be interested in inquiring to become a Third Order Franciscan. The St. Maximilian Kolbe Fraternity of Third Order Franciscans meets at St. Thomas Aquinas on the first Saturday morning of each month at 11 a.m. after the 10 a.m. Mass. At our gathering, we pray together, we study together, we eat together, and we encourage one another. Together we learn more deeply the meaning of love. If you would like more information on becoming a Third Order Franciscan, please call Tom O'Loughlin at 704-604-7739. That's 704-604-7739. We'll pray that you take the next step and come join us and be a part of our next gathering. Remember the words... Us is the last two letters of Jesus. Thank you. 
Hi folks, Dr. John Aquaviva here, host of one of the local shows on Carolina Catholic Radio called Faith in Sport. I invite you to check out my new book, Improving Body Image Through Catholic Teaching. This book is meant to address one of our culture's silent soul killers feeling terrible about how we look. But remember, God has something to say about this as well. That's Improving Body Image Through Catholic Teaching, available at tanbooks.com or Amazon. And be sure to join me each Monday at 2 p.m. for Faith in Sport. It's week two of the Carolina Catholic Radio December Pledge Drive. As you consider year-end charitable donations, please keep us in mind. Our goal in December is to clearly communicate why this apostolate is so needed for the 5 million souls living, working, and traveling across the Charlotte Diocese and upstate South Carolina. Consider how important it is to reach beyond the pews and into the public square of everyday life. If you go to Mass one hour a week, how are you spiritually fed the other 167 hours? If you don't go to Mass, how are you being spiritually fed at all? The best way to be spiritually fed in daily life is with EWTN Carolina Catholic Catholic Radio, available on AM 1270, Catholic Radio Charlotte, on carolinacatholicradio.org, and on the Carolina Catholic Radio mobile app. Because nearly everyone has a smartphone, you can take us with you anywhere you go. Carolina Catholic Radio and you, 100% listener supported, 100% here for you. Together, it's the best way to live your day. Please make your tax-deductible donation today. Thank you and God bless you. Hi folks, Dr. John Aquaviva here, host of Faith in Sport on the Carolina Catholic Radio Network. Tune in to hear Faith in Sport live Monday afternoons from 2 to 3 and tune in to hear from special guests on the show like head football coach at Wingate University, of course, the same place in which I teach exercise science. Joe Reich, welcome to the show. Is the game film in your head? Is it a distraction for you when you're at Sunday Mass? Yeah, Mass for me just kind of centers me. It's probably the one place I can put football away and just focus on something else. That's Faith in Sport, live Monday afternoons from 2 to 3, hosted by me, Dr. John Aquaviva, on the Carolina Catholic Radio Network, AM 1270, and also streaming at carolinacatholicradio.org and on the Carolina Catholic Radio app. Oh man, that's my favorite promo there, my new favorite show, Faith in Sport, and guess what? You're listening to Faith in Sport live on the Carolina Catholic Radio Network, AM 1270 WCGC. We're also streaming live at carolinacatholicradio.org and on the Carolina Catholic Radio app. And joining me in the studio is the host of Faith in Sport, Dr. John Aquaviva, and our special guest host today, Mr. Ed Billick. Well, thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. Hey, folks, it is now time. It's a unique feature of the show, and it's always one. It's not a stumping, but it gets perspectives out in the open. It's Q&A with Dr. A. That's right. So the first question this week, uh, Dr. A, Oklahoma quarterback Jalen Hurts. What a great year he's had. He's led his team to the college football playoffs. Where does he rank all time on these college football players? I mean, how, is, this guy's going to be an NFL, NFL star, yes, no? I, I'm not sure about whether he's going to be an NFL star or not, but for some reason he has – Evaded. His name has been evaded a lot of times when they're talking about the best college players of all time. But let me put this in perspective. You know, um, the the former uh, University of Florida quarterback Tim Tebow. He played for a couple of years in the NFL, and so forth, trying to make it to the great make, Christian guy. Yeah, good Christian guy. He is. Um, he really lives his faith. He just seems to be a you know guy with great character on and off the field. But he did not start his freshman year. He led UF. You know. Florida to national titles his junior, no, his sophomore and his senior year. He was outstanding, won a Heisman Trophy and so forth. But I would argue that Jalen Hurts is right up there with him. And the reason I compare him to Tim Tebow is so many people on ESPN and other talking heads have said, have said and said at the time that he was the best college player of all time. He was he was outstanding. His record overall was great. But I would put Jalen Hurts up there for a couple of reasons. First of all, as a freshman, he led Oklahoma to the college football playoff. They finished 13-1. and one. He was the SEC Player of the Year, Ed, as a freshman, right? And everybody knows just wow. how strong the SEC is, right? In his first two years at Alabama, he was 24-2. and two. And, of course, this is really kind of convoluted the way it ended, but by the time he was a junior, Tua Tagovailoa ended up becoming the starting quarterback. And the irony was, even though Tagovailoa led them to a 13-1 season last year, led them to the final playoff. Remember, they got crushed against Clemson. Clemson, yeah. Yeah. But in the SEC title game against Georgia, they were losing the game when Ty Valola got hurt. And guess who came in? Jalen Hurts. And he led them to victory. He doesn't necessarily get credit for the victory, but he was the one who led them to victory. So in essence, he was 25-2 and two in his two-plus years with Alabama. He transfers after his junior year, not playing at Alabama, to Oklahoma. 
and he leads them to a 12 and 1. They won the Big 12. They're 12 and 1. They're headed to the playoff. They're going to play. They're going to have right a mighty big uh, challenge in playing number one LSU in the first game. But I think overall, when it's all said and done, he's going to be considered one of the best, best college players of all time, and he deserves to be at least in the same conversation with Tim Tebow. And as much as anything, I remember talking two years ago on Radio Maria's version of Faith in Sport. I said the hit of the week was just how poised he was. Man, he would get sacked for an 18-yard loss sometimes. That's exaggeration. He'd get, he'd get sacked for like an 8-yard loss. It'd be third down and 18. And the look in his face, looking toward the bench, was just collected, smooth. And he would just, sometimes he would not only make that play happen, he'd get a first down. And I just thought he was a great leader on the field. And, of course, he's a great talent. Now, see, Chris, he convinced me. With that background with Alabama and reminding me of that. And, oh, by the way, Jalen Hurts with his confidence on the big show. They go up Amazing. against LSU. Now, folks, this is a question I have for uh, John earlier. Let's hear it. The LSU head coach. How, how do you <laughs> – wait, wait, I think we got a clip. Let's hear it first. Did you tell me – why do you say this guy's name? Yeah. Go ahead. You know, it didn't matter to us. Uh, anytime, anywhere, anybody, we're ready to play. So, uh, you know, we're going to be playing Oklahoma, a great football team. Uh, wherever they tell us to play, we're going to show up and we're going to be ready. I say prayers for him because I think he's got a problem with his voice, but he sure doesn't have a problem. What is his name? Ed Orgerod is his name. In fact, a lot of people, they mispronounce his name, his last name. They don't really know how to say it. They want to avoid it. So they just say Coach O. But that was great because that was one of the reasons we had such a good time before we went on air today. Ed or Orgeron. 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 Ed, wait, folks, when Ed played that copy of that little piece there, I said, is that somebody imitating him? Chris, play that one more time. This is the head coach of LSU, Ed Orgeron, talking in a press conference about playing the aforementioned Jalen Hurts in Oklahoma. You know, it didn't matter to us. Uh, anytime, anywhere, anybody, we're ready to play. So, uh, you know, we're going to be playing Oklahoma, a great football team. Uh, wherever they tell us to play, we're going to show up and we're going to be ready. They'll play anybody, won't they? <laughs> and seriously, if somebody, like let's say he coached back in the 1920s and there was no audio of him and people just described what he sounded like. That's exactly like if you go. He was a gravelly fo- voice guy. He's he was Cajun. Cu- he's got Cajun in him. He's got Cajun in him. He's just got grit in him. He's probably got dirt under his fingernails from the time he was a kid. He's a football. coach. He's a football coach. He's a foot. He was a football player. And if you had somebody describe it, you would think they were exaggerating that. That's yeah. exactly him. He's almost like a cartoon character. <laughs> hey, our second question for Doctor A this week here locally. Charlotte, the city of Charlotte, the booming city of Charlotte. Are we surprised that we here in Charlotte may get a major league soccer team? Nobody should be surprised by this. In fact, I think there's only a couple teams, like Las Vegas is another one. The other one is out west, too, but it looks like for sure that we're going to get it. But if you think about it, Ed, it just makes perfect sense for a couple reasons. Who's the fastest growing city or one of the fastest growing cities in America? We're we're on the list for all major league sports teams. It's quite possible someday we're going to have a major league team here. The closest one is Atlanta. The other closest one is Washington, which is not close. No, they're not really close. It's a it's a it's a perfect ingre- you know it's a it's a perfect recipe to have a major league team here. Major league soccer looks like they're going to come. The language from major league soccer is that. Charlotte is going to be the 30th team. But it makes sense for a couple other reasons. Not only are people moving here, soccer is bigger and bigger. Soccer is bigger and bigger here in the South. A lot of people have come down from the North, right, to get to warmer climates. And soccer is probably bigger in the North and the Northeast than it is down South. But that's one of the reasons it's growing in popularity here. People like you and I that grew up in the Midwest, grew up in the East, you come down here and you bring that love of a different sport that is really not on the tip of the tongue of a lot of people here in the Charlotte area. And I think the fan base is growing and growing. It just makes sense. You hit on two great points, too. The Charlotte Knights have led attendance records. Baseball, nice family yeah. outing in the yeah. International League. They've led yeah. attendance records. You go to a Carolina Panther game right now with the cost of parking, $40, $50 to park. The tickets are outrageous. I tell you, yeah, not the NFL, it's better to watch it at home, if you ask me. Yeah. But soccer is exciting live, and I'm sure the tickets aren't going to be that expensive. And uh, I think parking won't be either. I think it's perfect, perfect fit. No, I think it's inevitable. Hey, speaking of, um, you know, so we don't get too far away from the Ed Orgeron and LSU thing. A couple years ago on the Radio Maria's version of Faith and Sport, we had the uh, announcer 
for LSU football. Oh, yeah, that's right. Another connection. You Another have. connection we have. His name is Deacon Dan Bourne. He's a permanent deacon down in Louisiana. One of the parishes down yeah, there. Yeah, one of the yeah. parishes down Not there. Not a parish like a local government, like a that's Catholic right. parish, right? That's right. Yeah. He's, a, he's a member of a parish and a parish, right? Down in Louisiana, that's the language they speak. Anyway, he's agreed to come back on the show, and he's going to be here on January 13th, which is the same day of the college football Run final. It down. He's going to be on. He's the voice of the uh, LSU Tigers. Well, that's kind of the way to put it. He's not the play-by-play guy, but he does the announcing at the home games at Tiger Stadium. Oh, he's the stadium announcer. Yeah, he's oh, that's the, even better. And, and and you probably remember he's got a great voice. And, and you and him, Dan Bourne is his name. You guys had a voice off. Yeah, basically. we did a sound off. Yeah, <laughs> Chris, you you missed it. Like he's got a voice just like. And I said, okay, Dan, you guys are going to have a sound off here. And I just mentioned it. And they both had to say it. And then I gave basically a rating on scale from one to ten. Who won? Like for instance, I said. Just say, ladies and gentlemen. And Ed would go, ladies and gentlemen. And Dan Bourne comes on, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I go, wow, I think that was a tie. Right? <laughs> that was fun. That was a fun show. That was fun. You bring yeah. on some great guests. Okay, folks, write it down. What, January 13th? January 13th. That'll yep. be a good one. And then next week we have coming up is, you. I don't know if you remember this, but over, one of my hits was in the Diocese of Detroit, Archdiocese of Detroit, Bishop Alan Vigneron said the CYO, Catholic U- youth organization and all catholic high schools can no longer practice or play on sundays mm-hmm. and they and, and that was that became a policy in the spring anyway his spokesman father steve pullis is going to come on next monday to talk about how interesting what yeah. a great discussion that's yeah be. i think it's going to be great and i'm really looking forward to having him on and of course as much as anything i want to know how, how are the parents, how are the coaches, how has everybody handled this? Because that's a big change. That's a great follow-up. Oh, yeah. yeah. That'll be a great So that'll be next week. So, yeah, that, we have a lot of stuff to look forward to. Let's do our uh, Pope quote of the week, and then I think we have time for a couple more things uh, before we go for the day. But the Pope quote of the week, in fact, as I'm reading this, Ed, you probably didn't have a chance to read this off air, but tell me after my comments what you think about it. I'd love to get your opinion on this. This, again, like last week's Pope Quarter Week, comes from Pius XII. He reigned from 39 to 58, and he's made some great comments on the world of sport. And this is this week's Quote of the Week. Sport, rightly understood as an occupation of the whole man, and while perfecting the body as an instrument of the mind, it also makes the mind itself a more refined instrument for the search and communication of truth and helps man to achieve that end to which all others must be subservient, the service and praise of his creator. Wow. I know. I think this is one of the reasons why you become Pope, is you create statements like this. Really, this is beautiful. So let's take this apart a little bit. But I love the fact that he focuses on the mind. He says this is a for, a way to perfect the mind. And if you think about it, when we are competing in any game, in any sport, there's a lot going on intellectually, right? Figuring stuff out. In fact, you probably know this. What's the name of the test that uh, NFL players take? And especially it's given to the QBs. Have you ever heard of this? It's called the... Um, Oh, I'm at a loss for the term. A lot of people out there are like, Doc, it's this. There's a test they have to take. Yeah, you, I know what you're referring yeah, and to. And you yeah. only have a couple seconds to answer each question. And the reason they do that is because the world of sport, in particular the world of NFL football, you have to think quick. You it's have to decision make, making constantly. It's reviewing right. film and tape. Luke Keekley right. does that very well. Yep, you're right on. It sharpens the mind. But right. you as a health uh, science professor know that yeah. the body, by helping the body, it also stimulates the mind. I mean, just Absolutely. the phys- physicality of it. No, there's no question that the better in shape you are, in fact, the more oxygen that gets to the brain, the more well, that's it. Yeah. yeah, the more creative that you are, and research has consistently shown that. And I, and the reason I like this is because he's speaking the same truth and the same points that I like to make in the books that I've written about improving body image, and that is that there's a connection that we are embodied for a reason, and the mind needs to appreciate the body, and the body needs to appreciate the mind. In that, if we see them as interlocking kind of presences these are interlocking pieces to the same puzzle that both aspects should appreciate our lord it's our mind that gets to understand what god's word is to us through scripture through the mass through the sacraments and so forth 
but it's the body that gets to represent that. And the body represents us in mass each Sunday, and it represents us in sport and everything we do physically. You know, it represents us in the relationships we have with each other. Absolutely. And the discipleship that we're, we're tasked to go and, uh, Absolutely. and, and execute. Absolutely. What's the first thing you do? What's the first thing you did when you saw Chris today? Yeah, he shook his hand, maybe gave me a little hug. That's yeah. right. You embrace each other. You and I shake hands every time we see each other. And if we didn't have that, the, the, the relationship would have oh. not as much meaning. Oh. And that's his point here about sport is that the mind helps us understand what the body can do in sport, and he wants us to greatly appreciate Pope Pius the Twelfth from 1939 to 1950. There you have it, Pope Quote of the Week by Pius the Twelfth. Super. You know, um, there's one one thing I don't mention. This is this is truly random, but I am so impressed by this. Last year's Oklahoma Sooners, in fact, aforementioned Oklahoma Sooners, the quarterback was Tyler or Kyler Murray. Sure. Have you seen this guy play? Yeah, he plays for Arizona. Do you remember seeing him play last year for Oklahoma? Uh, somewhat, yeah. Ed, the Little fastest, guy. The Little fastest guy. guy in the field, without a doubt. He'd take off around the corner. He'd scramble. Nobody would catch him. If you notice now, brother, if you notice now, he gets caught all the time, and he's not slower. He's not any worse of a player. I'm just saying the NFL, the speed of NFL players is astounding. A couple weeks ago, against when they were playing against my beloved Detroit Lions, he started to roll out, and the defensive end was five steps from him. And he started to try to go around the corner, and the defensive end caught him from behind. And I said, that never happened in college football. I'm so impressed by the speed of the NFL. I, I met this guy a couple years ago. He got cut. I think it was the last cut before the final um, cut was made with the New York Jets, and I asked him about it. And he was a linebacker, and I said, Tell me about play at the NFL level. Now, he was Division I All-American, right? And I said, tell me about the NFL talent. He goes, John, everybody's strong. Everybody's big. He goes, but everybody's fast. He said, one time, I, they pitched it to the running back. I rolled out to make the tackle, and this guard was pulling, and he was coming around the corner to block me. He said he was coming so fast as a speed he never saw in any lineman. He goes, in fact, almost no wide receivers at my level had that guy's speed. Anyway, he got flattened. This is a true story. He said he was looking up at the sky, and he was there for a second, and as he was looking up at the sky, he goes, I think I've just been cut. And he got cut that day because he just couldn't handle the speed that the game was going. I thought that was an interesting point, and it really goes to show that I think Kyler Murray is neutralized. He's just not going to be as good as he was. It's amazing what the body is capable of and what the mind is capable of. There you go, brother. Uh, Folks, we want to thank you for joining today's show. I want to give special thanks to Ed. Thank you so much for coming in, Always a pleasure to be here with you guys. Keep up the good work. Yeah, we're going to keep doing that, and you'll be back in the beginning of January, from what I understand, right? Yeah, try to get in here at least once a month if uh, schedule. uh, We love it. Yeah. I don't know who's more excited, either Chris or I, but we both love having you in the studio. You guys are doing great work, Chris. And it just gives us energy to the show. It's It's great. It's always awesome when you're in the studio. Ed. Yeah, I agree with that. And I want to thank Dr. Dennis Johnson. Be sure to check out his, uh, the president, uh, he's the president of Hemview. They're consultants for sport leadership. So be sure to check them out. Uh, Hemview, Dr. Dennis Johnson. I'm Dr. John Aquaviva. And never forget, as Pope Francis said, in sport, as in life, competing for the result is important, but playing well and fairly is even more important. Pope Francis said that. Please join us next time here on Carolina Catholic Radio for Faith in Sport. And we want to thank you for tuning in to Faith and Sport on this Monday afternoon. And we want to thank you for joining myself, your host, Dr. John Aquaviva and Ed Billick on this Monday afternoon. And we invite you to tune in next Monday afternoon from 2 to 3 for more Faith and Sport live on the Carolina Catholic Radio Network, AM 1270 WCGC. We're also streaming live at carolinacatholicradio.org and on the Carolina Catholic Radio app. Make sure to tune in. For an encore presentation of Faith and Sport tonight at 10 and at the other encore presentation times throughout the week here on the Carolina Catholic Radio Network. Thanks for tuning in to Faith and Sport. Have a blessed day and a blessed week. Hello, God's beloved. I'm Annabelle Mosley, author, professor of theology, and host of Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. I invite you to listen in and find inspiration along this sacred journey we're traveling together. 
to make our lives a masterpiece and, with God's grace, become saints. Join me, Annabel Mosley, for Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. God bless you. Remember, you're never alone. God is always with you. We hope you enjoyed the program and will join us back for another show on WCAT Radio. This is Sebastian Mafud. Good day.